All right, well, you asked for it. So in this video, we're gonna do an overview of this death and return of Superman omnibus by a whole bunch of people. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them, all for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Um, so if you wanna see comic book unboxings, hauls, reviews, uh, creator interviews, all sorts of stuff like that, you should hit the subscribe button and then hit that bell icon, tap it, so that you're notified every time I post new videos. We do giveaways, we do random prizes. You just never know, so you gotta stay tuned, right? So. Today, this video is actually a follow-up to a video I made about a week and a half ago uh, when I showed you three whales, three books that are out of print that have been going for crazy prices that I've managed to score for cover price or below. And this Death and Return of Superman omnibus, this was like the top whale on my list. Um, honestly, I don't even know what book is the new whale on the list. I got Gotham Central. Ultimate Spider-Man and Death of Return. That was like the top three right there that I wanted to hunt down. I think everything else that I really want is probably getting a reprint soon. Uh, they're reprinting a bunch of the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man. So yeah, I'm sure I'll find something to replace it and go that will go back to the top of the most wanted pile. But this, this Death and Return of Superman right here, this was the clear numero uno, the number one. The idol, the highest title, <laughs> you know. So this is this is what I wanted. This is the one book that I felt like if I didn't get this book eventually, like I was just gonna be very upset. And I didn't want to pay the outrageous prices. Somebody has this book listed on eBay for almost three hundred dollars right now, and the original cover price was just one fifty. Now, if you guys know, you guys know I'm not a huge Superman fan, uh, but I just wanted this book because I love the cover. I love the fact that it has the fold out page and people just talk it up so much. Like people are like, you got to get this book. Um, I did watch the little animated movie. Uh, but anyway, this is all besides the point. The reason that we have this video, uh, I got to go ahead and shout you guys out because you made it happen. So at the end of my Omnibus Whale video, which honestly... I thought nobody was going to watch all the way through to the end and I was never going to have to follow through on this promise. But I said, if you guys got that video to 75 likes, then I would film the overview. I would crack it out of the plastic because I just wanted to keep it sealed, you know, in case I need, in case it appreciates in value, in case I need to sell it to start my baby's college fund or something. I was like, hey, you never know. So let me go ahead and check on this video right now and see where we are on the likes. All right. So as of right now, as of me recording this, there are 109 likes on that video. So clearly you guys wanted to see that overview. Like I said, I thought that, you know, nobody was going to watch all the way to the end to see me say, hey, get this to 75 likes in honor of the issue uh, number 75 where Superman dies. But you did it. And if I can't stand on my word, then what can I stand on? So because I'm a man of my word. We're gonna go ahead and switch up the camera view and we're gonna do this overview. All right, guys, so here we are looking at the death and return of Superman omnibus. It is going to pain me to take this out of this plastic, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and crack it open and then we can talk about you know what it collects and all that fun stuff. I got my steakhouse. Uh, this is a bottle opener, corkscrew and all that, but I don't drink, so. It's an unboxing knife, as far as I'm concerned. So let's cut into this. Now let's turn this so I can cut away from the pages. I'm left-handed, so I gotta, I gotta control this a little bit differently. All right, and let's do the same thing over here. I would hate to like slice open one of the pages. That would be the worst. All right, I think we've done enough. Now I can just kind of rip this open. All right, see? The Death and Return of Superman 
has been unsealed. Now, let's go ahead, see front of the dust jacket. I love that. I don't know if you can tell, but this, the black part is matte and all these color parts have this glossy finish. This is a really, really nice dust jacket. I like it a lot. And here we go. Uh, the epic event that shocked a nation and changed Superman forever. I love this bloody Superman logo. Um, says it was one of the most stunning and talked about events in modern comics history. The death of Superman at the hands of the nightmare creature called Doomsday made headlines across the country in the 90s. And now you can witness this epic story of the Man, Man of Steel's death and return in one massive omnibus. This amazing story guest stars the Justice League of America and many other DC Comics heroes as they witness the fall and rise of the greatest superhero of all time. That's debatable. That is so debatable. Anyway, so what does this collect? This collects Action Comics 683 to 692 and Annual Number 5, Adventure to Superman 496 to 505 and Annual Number 5, Green Lantern 46, Justice League of America 69 and 70, Superman, the Man of Steel, number 17 through 26 and annual number two. Superman, 73 to 83 and annual number five. Supergirl and Team Luthor special number one. News Time, the life and death of Superman and Superman, the legacy of Superman number one. And collected for the first time, the groundbreaking fold out from Superman number 75. Also features bonus materials, including a sketchbook section and previously unpublished artwork. So, very cool. There's a lot packed into this book for the cover price of $150. I'll go ahead and say it. If you can find this book at cover price, buy it, buy it twice. Like, I've seen this book go for some crazy prices, and when it pops up in those omnibus groups, it does not stay there quickly at, or long, for long at all. So, let's go ahead and take off this dust jacket. Very cool. And I'm gonna have to stretch out this spine Probably do it a couple of times. Um, but just taking a look, quick look at the dust jacket. We got Superman right here. We got Doomsday right here. Very cool. I'll move that out of the way. And boom, let's look at our hardcover. So this is the front. So we got Doomsday. Spine, still Doomsday. And the back is uh, Superman. That epic punch. We got Lois Lane here looking all concerned like she can do something about it. And then we got Jimmy Olsen just taking pictures, right? Yes, Jim, Jimmy Olsen is like everybody right now. Like, just let's just take pictures and put it on social media because we can't do anything else, right? So um, I guess I'll brighten this up just a little bit. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Let's stretch this spine out. This thing is massive. I, I do expect there to be gutter loss just with how many pages are in here but we'll see and obviously before i read it i'm going to stretch the spine quite a few times if you've never done this basically this is just helping to relax that ribbon so that you don't have issues with the pages falling out later um there's these books they come sewn to a binding but they're also glued as well and that glue hardens over time so if you're not reading your books evenly the glue will kind of snap or have like a specific stress point. Um, and eventually your binding is going to break. So you don't want that to happen. So you do this to relax the spine. So there's not that big stress point anymore. And the spine can kind of disperse that strain evenly. Distribute it evenly. There we go. So some people will are very meticulous, very methodical about this process. Others will just flip some pages a couple times and call it a day. Um, I'm just going to stretch it once. And then whenever I revisit this to actually read it, I'll stretch it again. Um, probably two to three more times, actually. But I mean, I don't know if you guys can pick that up. I don't know if the microphone's picking that up, but you can kind of hear the glue cracking as I kind of put some stress on these pages and separate them from each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this. I will say there is a bit of an eye on this book, so that's, that's a good sign.
Yeah, I mean, this is honestly for a DC Omnibus. DC Omnis are notorious for being bear traps, as we call them, right? Books with books that don't like to stay open, books that you got to fight with, books with a lot of gutter loss. DC is kind of known for that, unfortunately. Um, so the fact that this is opening up as well as it is, it's actually pretty good. So just stretching it one time, you can see there is a bit of an eye. So that's good. That's a good sign. Like I said, I'll stretch this out a couple of times before I actually read through it, you know, sometime in the next eight years. Uh, so here we go. Um, well, now that I've gotten it semi stretched, I guess I can flip this and let's show. That's how that spine goes, that wraparound spine. Very cool. Like it a lot. Like it a lot. But yeah, so here we go. The Death and Return of Superman. So the bookend pages are these newspaper clippings. We got Superman's tombstone. And then like this nice title page. How is this page creased? See, this page is definitely creased. You can't really see it. Maybe you can see it there. <laughs> this page is creased. I hope that's not like a, a theme. But anyway. Death and Return of Superman Omnibus. You guys saw me take it out of the plastic. It just came from the bindery with these folds. Okay, it looks like it's just... Well, it might be the whole first ribbon. Wow. Whatever, whatever. So anyway, we're going to thumb through this artwork. Um, let's see, is there a table of contents? All right. Love this little statue that they erected for Superman. And yeah, we do get a table of contents. Every issue plus the page number it appears on. And hey, look, there's page numbers actually on the omnibus this time. You can't see it, but that's this is page seven. Um, I love this. Lois in tears, carrying her beloved Superman. I don't know how well you can see any of this, but hey. Um, so there we go. We got Doomsday. Here, just punching through this wall. <laughs> there we go. The beginning of the end. Superman number 18. So, I mean, I don't know a whole bunch about this story. Superman's never really been my guy. I grew up a fan of Batman. And, you know, unfortunately, you kind of get the impression that you can either be a Batman fan or a Superman fan but you cannot be both, right? And so growing up, I just never read Superman because he just seemed very boring in comparison to old bats. Um, as I mature, as I grow up, <laughs> as I get older, I've been trying to give Superman a fair shot, a fair shake, if you will, and say, oh, by the way, as far as how this stays open, it doesn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been trying to give Superman like a fair shake um and like hey you know maybe i'll find a superman story that i love and then that'll get me into the the character so far that hasn't been the case like i i can get with superman when he's on a team so i mean i love the justice league book as well as the uh cartoons um i even i read batman superman um monthly when it comes out um and I actually do pick up the monthly Superman title. Um, Bendis is on it right now. And honestly, I have not been enjoying Bendis' run. But um, we got a new Philip Kennedy Johnson is actually starting soon. So we'll see what his run's about. Maybe his run will help me fall in love with it. I've heard that the Peter Tomasi Superman run is the best one ever, or like at least modern. So I pre-ordered that omnibus. We'll see when it comes. If it ends up being good, I will say the artwork in this book is very good. I like it. Um, I've seen the Reign of the Superman movie and um, this. So this scene is very familiar to me from that. We are smack dab in the middle of issue 75, by the way. Spoiler alert. Superman dies. And this this is what a lot of people bought this omnibus for. 
this fold out page, right? So you got Lois holding Superman, relax, relax. And then you fold out the page. Ah, uh, he's dead. And Lois grieves the day the Superman died. So that's very cool that this that's included in that way. Because I've never read the issue, maybe it doesn't hit as hard for me. But it's just dope to have it. So we get the death of Superman. We get uh, the world without a Superman. So this is just everyone responding to... My bad, the camera stopped filming. So we get the death of Superman in here. We get the world without a Superman, which is like everyone responding to Superman being gone. Uh, so we get to see like, okay, how is Metropolis faring? You guys will see, I keep trying to kind of push this book over to see if maybe it'll stay open. It's not quite staying open yet. Um, but yeah, um, and I know that in this book, we also get the reign of the Superman. So like Superman's dead. And okay, here we go. It's kind of staying open. Not really. We're about, eh, we're not even a third of the way in yet. So give it the benefit of the doubt. But um, uh, here's Lobo. And this, here's a kid with a Superman haircut. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. But this dude has Superman cut into his hair. Uh, it's hilarious. But I mean, that was a thing in the 90s. Like just crazy haircuts with your favorite style uh, cut in there. Some people were cutting that Carvin Jordan logos in their hair. Um, I definitely would have done a Batman logo if my mom would have let me do that. But nah, I just had the simple part. That's all I had. Uh, like Nas back in the day. But anyway. So here we go. The book is actually starting to lay. Now I have to like help it stay open. So that's good. Uh, the legacy of Superman. So we're still dealing with the fallout of Superman being gone. Like I said, I know that this book collects the reign of the Superman as well. And as far as I know, at least from watching from watching the movie, we got a bunch of people trying to assume the role of Superman or take over that mantle. Um, you know, so we have Cyborg Superman, who is a Supergirl and Team Luthor. But yeah, we had Cyborg Superman, we had Steel, we had Superboy. I think that's it, actually. And everybody's like, okay, well, which one's the real Superman? But they kind of just do what they do in tribute to Superman with, you know, some other motivation and mo motives as well. Oh, that's that fisherman dude. Uh, so anyway. Oh, no. Superman must be back <laughs> because his tomb is empty like Jesus. So not only does Superman get sent from another world to save the planet like Jesus, now he dies and they go to the tomb and it's empty and he resurrects like Jesus. Ah. <sighs> That man's got a God complex, <laughs> in the words of the last poets. So here we go. Here's Superboy, Connor Kent. Very cool. Um, and here's that other Superman dude with the shades. I don't remember his name. Is that Superboy Prime? I don't know, man. I don't know. Figure it out eventually, I guess. There's just all these Supermen. And because I've never read the story, I can't really say. Who's who? But yeah, here we are. We're in the middle of the book. And like I said, it's laying open pretty well. There's Cyborg Superman. So it's just all these different Supermen appearing out of the blue. And it's like, yo, what's going on? I turned this light up a little bit. I feel like it was just a little bit dark for my taste. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so here we go. I really like this Superboy. I like this character design. I like the jacket. I like it, you know. It just screams 90s to me, and it's part of the reason I bought this book, because I'm like, okay, I like that Superboy. I like a lot of stuff that's around the Superman mythos, you know what I'm saying? I love Lois Lane and how she's a strong woman, you know? Oh, look at this, Guy Gardner. Uh, but yeah, I love Lois Lane. Um, I love, oh, here's Super, Superboy versus Steel. That's cool. Still in the reign of the Superman. Um, who penciled this issue? It looks like Frank Miller type stuff, but then not. So let's go back. John Bogdanovich. Interesting. This looks like Frank Miller Sin City faces. But anyway. 
Here we go. Here's my man, John Henry Irons. Steel. Shaquille O'Neal there. <laughs> that movie was terrible. Um, but yeah, I like a lot of stuff around Superman. I like Lois Lane. I like Perry White. I like Jimmy Olsen. It's just Superman himself that I have such a hard time getting into. He just seems boring. He, he seems kind of one dimensional, seems overpowered, and he just like kind of punches his way out of stuff is how it always has seemed to me. Um, but I did read Superman Birthright and I enjoyed it and that gave me hope. Like, okay, well, there is a, a, a way, you know, to depict Superman. What I love about Superman, at least from reading Birthright, is that you get the idea that he just stands for something. He is a symbol of hope. And as long as Superman is around, then the people of Metropolis know that they're in good hands. And I'm like, you know what? I can live with that. I can get with that. And so as long as, you know, the threat he's facing is, you know, good enough or whatever, that can be, that's the makings of a good story, a good hero. But I mean, a hero is really only defined or well defined by his villains. And I feel like Superman might be lacking in the villains department. He's got Lex Luthor. He's got Brainiac. But then he's just got a bunch of random monsters that he fights. And it's like, there's no depth there. Like, I don't care about Mongol. I don't care about Doomsday. I don't care about the alien of the week. You know, this isn't Hercules. Like, I don't care about the trials that you go through fighting these big monsters and robots. Uh, I want to know, like, you know, how are you, how are you using your mind to overcome these situations? And that's where I feel like Superman lacks, ultimately. He doesn't use his mind enough. And I mean, he's Clark Kent. He's supposed to be like one of the best reporters ever. So that means Superman should be smart enough to use his mind a lot. Oh, here comes Superman with the mullet. He's back. Spoiler alert. Um, But yeah, you guys asked for this overview, so you're getting this overview. Oh, see, look, big monster. That's what's hard for me to get into. Like, why are you fighting monsters? Fight some people. But I guess that wouldn't be fair now, would it? Kryptonian against hero or humans. What I mean? It works for Lex. But yeah, so this is how the omnibus ends. So you can see it's starting to try to close up on me now. Now that we're closer to the end. Honestly, though, I'm just glad to have this book. Because I feel like if there's a story that's going to get you into Superman, it's the one that made him matter, right? The death of Superman seems to have made Superman relevant again to people who wouldn't have been interested otherwise, right? So hopefully Superman dying and the fallout from it and everyone's response to him being gone helps me to be invested in his return. Hopefully as I'm reading through this omnibus, I'm like, man, I really hope Superman comes back soon. And if this omnibus can help me accomplish that, if it can help me see what's so great about Superman to the point that I want him to return, then perhaps it'll make me more of a Superman fan in general and it'll help me appreciate other Superman stories better. So here we are with the extras. We got some an introduction by Mike Carlin. Um, so that's cool. Got a little bit of a letter here. And then we got some pinups. We got John Bogdanovich or Bogdanov. I feel like I've seen it seen seen it as Bogdanovich. But anyway, Dan Jurgens. Uh Jackson Golds. So uh, I've I've had this, this trade paperback. I actually just gave it away uh on the thousand subscriber stream. So shout out to I think Darth Gojira won that set. Um but yeah so we got some creator bios, a cover gallery, um just some very cool stuff. I love sketches. Like, that's what I buy an omnibus for, to see the little extras. Um, but yeah, so that's really dope. I love the Superboy character design. John Bogdanov. Here's a part of the, here's a, a copy of the whiteboard that they put the idea up there for. Interesting. News clippings. More character bios. The tombstone. And that's the end of the book. All right. So 
there you have it. That was the death and return of Superman Omnibus um, by Dan Jurgens and Jerry Ordway and Carl Kessel and all these other people. So many people made this book happen. I am so excited to own this. And shout out to you guys for clicking like on the previous video so much that I had to crack it open. Honestly, after that whole Ultimate X Men or Uncanny X Men Volume 4 incident, I was kind of happy to open it just to make sure it wasn't damaged. And thankfully, this one isn't, with the exception of those weird creases on some of the beginning pages. I'm glad to own this. Shout out to uh, the Omnibus Collectors group on Facebook because that's where I got this. If you're looking for out of print Omnibus, you probably your best bet is probably to look on some of these Facebook groups. So I'll shout them out. Um, there's the Omnibus Collector. There's a uh, Om Omnibuds Cafe. There's Comic Book Group. Join Facebook groups dedicated to comics. That's probably your best bet to find out of print Omnibus people. You know, people fall on hard times. People want to make room for something else in their collection. Some people aren't as married to these books as other people are. Um, so you can get a good deal. Um, some groups even have a rule that you can't sell for over cover price. So if you ask, if you look, if you ask me how to find out of print omnis, I'm going to tell you to go on Facebook because I've had great experience there. This is book number three that was out of print that I bought on Facebook for a great price. Um, and I have no complaints about it. So yeah, that's how you get out of print omnis. If you want to get omnibus before they go out of print while they're still new and you want to get them for a great price then you should check out our sponsor organicpricedbooks.com uh, they are the newest and fastest growing source for graphic novels collected editions omnibus at amazing prices um, honestly they're good enough to compete with all the other major players out there um, and i'm super glad to have their support for this channel so if you want to save $2, two additional dollars off their already rock bottom prices, then just use my promo code KSquad. Uh, use the coupon code KSquad and you'll get an extra $2 off of your purchase. So not only do you get $2 off your purchase by using my code KSquad at checkout, but you can also refer friends. And the more friends you refer, the more rewards points you get. And the more rewards points you get, the more you can buy and the more you save. So very, very dope. Shout out to JP and the entire team at Organic Price Books. Thank you for being a valued sponsor of this channel. Uh, so yeah, shout out to you guys. Again, if you want to use that coupon code for the third time, it is K-Squad. Use that coupon code. You'll get an additional $2, excuse me, off of their already rock bottom prices. Um, but that's going to do it for me. I hope you saw something in this video that you liked. And if not, hey, that's cool. You can always buy what you like, make sure you read what you buy, and be nice to others, because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.